cool. All right. Well, listen, we'll, ju- we'll just go straight into it kind of thing. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll build up a bit of a profile about yourself. And what would be quite nice is, is to hear your story about how you kind of got into boxing, uh, what age you were and, and yeah, what, what what was the, what was your motivation to kind of pick it up? Yeah, well, I, th- I first got into boxing when I was about well, actually, no, I didn't really get into it. My brother was boxing, and I was about ten or eleven, and he was competing in boxing, and I was kind of just in around the club, you know, and they were skipping. I do a bit of skipping, and I wasn't really in with any coaches or anything like that, just doing the bits, copying and everyone around the club for I'd say maybe a year or two. I wasn't competitive or anything. I went away um, working then for a couple of years and I kind of got back in when I was about to 16. I got back into it and I boxed a super heavyweight for a couple of years. And it wasn't, I really, I only got into it really just to lose a bit of weight again. But I think when I got into it, I, so I got the hunger. That it, I remember what it was like to be around the club when I was younger. So I competed a bit of this, but I still wasn't very competitive. But then I kind of started a, uh, you know, I started winning fights at super heavyweight and I started beating guys that I shouldn't have been beaten. So then I was kind of, my coach was like, can you do his, if you put your head down and take a serious job, we can actually go somewhere. Then we, we cut down to heavyweight to 91, the amateurs. And yeah, we, look, I had a great career at 91 in the amateurs. And um, I won a couple of titles at 91. I won an international cup at 91 and as a senior. And then I cut to light heavyweight and uh, it was, over in Harringay, actually, I fought a light heavyweight first, and then, um, yeah, put in, I boxed great at light heavyweight in, and it was actually over there I met my promoter then, my my manager now, and he offered to sign me over, and you know, I was kind of, I wasn't hugely into the amateurs, I was, I loved it, but I was getting so sick of it, to be honest, and I always knew the pro game would have been kind of suited more to me, but I never thought about turning over. But when he put the offer to me, I had to think about it. And that's how that's how I ended up turning over. You know, you said you got a bit sick of it. Do you want to elaborate uh, slightly on yeah. why why you? Yeah, get... I, I don't I don't even go too much into it, obviously, because people heard me say it before. But it was just more so that you know the bad decisions and everything that goes with the amateurs. You know, obviously there's bad decisions in pro and too, but you know you get paid for it. <laughs> so. Um, but yeah, look, it was more so just the decisions and it was hard, you know, training for maybe 20 weeks and end coming up to something like Harringay and then things getting a bad decision, you know, it, it, it turn you, it turn you off the sport really. So that's more so what I mean by getting sick of it. How long were you an amateur for in total? Uh, I suppose I was an amateur for about seven years. And what, what, how many fights in total did you have? Come, um, in total, I I'd, oh, I'd say I just uh, around the 40 max. I'm not actually certain, to be honest. I didn't count my fights or anything, but I'd say around 40 fights. But I wasn't I wasn't competitive. Well, I was competitive, but I didn't take it serious competitive until really, I'd say my last you know, 10, 12 fights. I, I didn't, you know, I was more so boxing for fun up until I knew, you know, when my coach put me aside and Joe said, if you put your head down, you know, we can actually go somewhere with this. So... Really, all them fights, job, the most meaning ones would have been the last 12 or 15 fights. Why do you think you didn't really take it as seriously as maybe you should have? You know, maybe I didn't realise how good I was at this, I think. And when you don't realise how good you are, something, I guess you're not pushing to win these big things. You know, or if you're telling yourself you can't win, it's more so like, oh, what's the point in trying? But, you know, when I pulled aside and told... You know, you can win these things. The first thing we done was cut down. I went down my next competition. I won an international title. Like you know, so um, I think it was that. I think I just need that boost, the motivation, just for someone to tell me. Especially that person they could tell me is your coach, like you know, coming to me and saying, "Josh, you just put your head down. You can win these things." So I think that's what I needed. Just. And and did you have uh, the support of your of your parents? Yeah, uh, just everyone was very supportive of it. Um, look, I guess they don't mind once I was happy and once <laughs> I wasn't getting hurt, you know. So I was, I wasn't getting hurt or anything. Obviously, it's super heavyweight. It's scary. What I, I can imagine it's scary watching <laughs> your son and going in fighting a fellow 120 kgs of nothing but muscle. But, but um, what, did, what can they do? I was in love with it. There was no stopping it. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. And did you travel around the world fighting on the amateur scene? Um, you know, I was actually only between Ireland and England, really. I never had a chance to box with the Irish, the Irish team because, I, as I said, I didn't take it serious in my last couple of fights. I think if I did stick out the... I definitely think if I stuck out with the amateurs, I would have won the... I would have won some internet, or sorry, some national titles in the last couple of years, but you know, it's just something I wasn't hungry for, to be honest. And when you were in the amateur amateur scene, did you did you box anyone a particular note? Uh, particular note, I guess I boxed a lot of the um, from England, maybe from your side. A fight, I had a good fight in '91 with Karen Gilpin. I know he's a. Uh, he was kind of a name that was coming up in England a bit there in the last couple of years. Not sure if you know him. He would have been the one on your side of the ocean that I would have that I would have fought. Um, we had we had a very good fight actually with Kerry Gilpin at heavyweight. And um, over here, I say boxed nearly every elite, you know, and the elite champions over here that in Ireland, like you know, small hall shows and or sorry and home shows and things like that. I just boxed them all, you know, Martin Keane and the super heavyweight champion. I, you know, I boxed him, Tommy Hyde, who was, I think, is, you can nearly say is going to be the next elite champion that like heavyweight. I boxed with him, Joy. I've, I've boxed them all, really, to be honest. Uh, just going back a sec, what, what was the name of your amateur club? Cash and Vale Boxing Club is in Bally Bunyan, County Kerry. And was that close by to where you lived at, or lived at? No, time? actually, it was the furthest away. Um, so when I was younger, when I say my brother was boxing, uh, they're, they're all great clubs, but I, you know, I seen, I knew what the coach could do and all that. And when I said I get back into boxing, the coach from Castle Bay, Valley Bunyan, that's about, it was about an hour from where I lived. You know, there was a club only 15 minutes in the road from me as well. But that coach, Patrick O'Brien, he actually came to my town and he was doing just a couple of boxing sessions. I think it was like two boxing sessions or a boxing session a week, just more so because there was no boxing club near us. And he wanted to get the taster out to our side of the country, you'd say. And it was actually there I met him. And I was actually going to go to the nearer club, but when I started working my pad in, I realized he's actually, yeah, he's a good coach. And we, we, we were gelling quick, very quickly together, we were gelling. So I said, you know, I, I thought it was the best, the best option for me to travel the hour over traveling the 15 minutes if I, you know, for me to learn quicker. Yeah, no, uh, that, that makes sense, especially if you kind of gel with someone and yeah, get to know them. And, and, a lot of people could be boxing a long time and they might never gel with the coach and it's unfortunate because I'd say there's a lot of could have been, you know. Yeah, well, were you studying or working at the time? Yeah, well, I was in school at that time at the... Uh, Oh, sorry. No, I wasn't in school at that time. I was actually, I just came back from America. I went over for a couple of months doing work. But yeah, I was just working, just really anything, laboring and everything around around here. And, and was that was that kind of difficult, like, like mixing the two? It, it wasn't when I wasn't as competitive because I wasn't taking it too serious. So it was just more going for the fun of it. But I think when I got more competitive, it started getting hard to juggle the two because I was trying to get more time in to do my drill work, more time into you know, getting things right with my box and along with trying to juggle work at the same time. It didn't get tough until I got more competitive a couple of years ago, yeah. And when you, when you started taking it seriously, I assume you mean like your diet and, and kind of like, like yeah. lifestyle. Yeah, look, I, was, I, was, I, was walk, I was fighting to wherever you know, I was 115 kgs and I had no business there, you know. Like... I had the height for it and I definitely had the size for it, but you know, I was carrying unnecessary weight. Um, like if you asked me that time, I would have said geez, the limit I'd get to was 91. And I got to 91. You know, I was back good at 91, but never in my days I think I'd fight at 81 if you'd ask me then, you know. <laughs> yeah. So so tell me the the, the 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 move from the amateur to the pro. You said you were, you know, Obviously, you don't want to elaborate on that in too many details, but you know you were kind of getting yeah. fed up with the amateur. What was the um, what was that transition like, and how, you know how long did it take, and and what gym did you go to, etc. Yeah, so I'm from Kerry, um, and when I when I signed with my manager, he said to me, you know, he was just saying, there's loads of coaches. He could show me loads of coaches. 
But he said, just watching it, he said, I think a good coach for you would be John Dan Lewin. And he was in, he's in Dublin. Uh, he's still my head coach now, but um, he's in Dublin, which is like three and a half, four hours away from me. And so I started traveling up there quite a bit. And at the start, you know, I was like, oh, no, this, this isn't working. No, I, maybe I was thinking this, this style suit me more than it would. But then all of a sudden, John after, I don't know. I, you know, honestly, I'd say it was a couple of months. Just one day, it just kind of, we were just on the pads one day and it just kind of clicked with me. And then it, you know, everything just started flowing nicely then. So um, it took a couple of months, you know, it took me to just transition properly. But I think more that was me and John all getting to jail too at the same time as changing my style. So when we kind of jailed, everything just started you know, flopping together. So yeah, a couple of months and we we're flying. Obviously, there's a load more to work on. We're only, we're only starting out, you know, but we're getting there. Yeah, and and obviously, I'm I'm assuming you you you're keeping to your kind of like your diet and you know making sure yeah. that your lifestyles are on point and stuff like that. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Well, look, I my diet, I always keep my diet good. Well, let's knock out the last month of Christmas, but other than that, eleven months of the year, my diet is yeah, it's nearly a hundred percent. So uh, yeah, I take that very serious, and my lifestyle, my lifestyle is very much suited to uh, the boxing really. Um, I'm on call but work, so training and everything is super good around us. And um, yeah, look, everything's everything's going well now. Uh, and obviously, the amateur and program is slightly different. So, how long would you say, in in your opinion, it, it took you to really adapt to the uh, professional side of things? I think I'm still adapting to it, to be honest. Um, the, my first fight, I don't know, maybe you haven't seen it, but my first fight was a bit. Ja, obviously nerves and everything that was a bit jittery and ja, getting stuck in stupid things. My second fight was just a, a whole different fight completely. I changed. It was like a different person fighting my first fight. I was around moving and moving fast, throwing fast punches and counter punches. My second fight, I just, I, ja, I just walked my opponent down, sitting on my feet, you know, leaving my shots off. Um, so I think I'd still adapt. And there were two different completely fights I fought. So, which is a good thing, I think, because I got to see two different sides of myself. So I'm still trying to adapt to that. I'm trying to meet somewhere in the middle where I can, you know, counter punch, work my speed and, you know, sit down on my shots at the same time. But I think it's coming together nicely. Uh, and your first professional fight, you know, you, you mentioned that, you know, you're a little bit nervous and what have you. Have, have you rewatched the fight? And, you know, do, do you, obviously you're going to spot holes and what have you. But, you know, do, does it, do you take much from it? Yeah, look, there was a lot of stuff actually that I took that I liked from the first fight, along with stuff that I didn't like. Um, I think you know, so the first, first two or three rounds, I was kind of, no, I wasn't getting caught a lot, but there were a lot of stupid things, you know, where I was just nearly getting clipped that I shouldn't have been, you know, I should have been pulling out a lot faster and things like that. I took a lot of that from it and tried to bring it to my second fight. But then, about a, I think it was about a week before my second fight, then my opponent got changed. I was, I was actually fighting, um, I can't remember his name, but he was a tall lad from England. And then it was changed. He couldn't, I'm not sure what happened. He couldn't fight. And then it was a shorter opponent. I ended up fighting at cruiser race in uh, Southpaw as well. So a complete different style. So we had a week not to change it around, which I hadn't trained in a pro camp for a Southpaw yet. So we just kind of tried that out. We said we'd sit down in our punches and walk forward. But yeah, my first fight, I definitely took a lot for it because, you know, with the big crowd there and everything. And there was a big crowd there, which was great because, you know, it, it gave me that feel for the pro game as well. So, yeah, I took a lot from the first fight. Was it, it, was it more nervous that you were fighting in front of your friends and family or that it was your first professional fight? I think I went into it with, it was the first professional fight, but then, you know, when you, when you're, when you hear them, really roaring you on and everything, it kind of goes to your head as well. You know, you got to start doing better. I have to do this. I have to impress them. I done that a bit for a few rounds. And then I remember going back to my corner before the fourth round. And my coach was like, God, relax. Just relax. He was saying, Jud. And he actually, it was the first time in a corner where I kind of listened to a certain combination I was told to throw. And he said, just relax. He said, give it 30 seconds. He said, feel, feel the round that will give me your jab. And he was saying, like, just turn your hand into that uppercut because I was landing uppercuts all night. But it was like they were just, 
they were to step it wide, they were take, the guard was taking them, and he was saying just turn, turn that knuckle in, um, just turn that knuckle around, and that's as I done about thirty seconds into the round, I seen them out with the jab, I left that three or four punches, and I turn, I just turn my fist and threw the uppercut again, and it uh, took out the opponent. That actually is something I, yeah, it's a that was one of the big things I took from my debut was to really just relax in the corner and listen to what your coach is saying because yeah, they're seeing something that you're not seeing in there. So, so the first couple of rounds you were kind of, fighting. <laughs> yeah, you got going through the motions and you know yeah. obviously you had your you had your family and your friends there and could, yeah. could you hear could you hear them kind of shouting at you? Oh, every word, <laughs> every word. Yeah, well, now during the during the rounds, there's you know you blank out a lot during the rounds, but definitely in between rounds, I could hardly hear my coaches because uh, there was a bus load of them up there, and they were right behind my corner, and they were roaring. I could not hear a thing my coaches were saying. <laughs> what what walkout music did you have? Oh, I, I used Valhalla. Not there. I don't know if you know that one. No, I don't think kind so, of, no. No, it's just kind of an Irish remix. It's a good one, actually. Yeah. <laughs> is is, that, is that going to be your one going forward? Or are you going to swap, uh, mix it up? Oh, I don't know. I don't really think of them things. I kind of, I forget, I actually forget about them until just before the fight. And then they're like, what are you walking out to? And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> that happened to me over in York Hall. I didn't even have anything in my head and I couldn't think of the name of that song I just told you. And I was like, oh, what am I going to say? Uh, I can't remember what song I said, but I just, I just, I just shouted out some name of a song and that's it. Yeah, because I know some fighters are quite superstitious. They like, like, they pick a song and they, um, and obviously if they win on a debut, they, they, they kind of keep the same one. Whereas, you know, I've spoken to a few fighters and they, they don't really. It's not like a big deal to them, kind no, of. Thing. Do you know, it, it doesn't bother me. It definitely doesn't bother me. But at the same time, it can make the vibe for the fight as well. Because you, know, you, you could be training as well to certain songs that give you that extra boost. And if you're walking out to it, and it gets the hair standing on your arms, like, you know, that could, it'll get you up for the fight a bit more and getting the crowd up for the fight as well. When the crowd are behind you as well, you know, it makes a massive difference. Yeah, absolutely. Just, uh, it'd just be nice to hear about your kind of, obviously you, you work full-time as a firefighter. How How does that, you know, uh, come in between the boxing because obviously you know it's not a nine to five isn't it it's 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 it can be various different hours um talk to me about how you kind of balance your work life and 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 yeah. train and and box so it's actually been it's very easy to be honest because um, i'm actually on call so it's it's just i'm not in the station the whole time i'm near the station and if my pager goes i i have to go so it's actually it's suit and train and perfect you know but Obviously, the job comes first. So if I'm in the middle of training and the pager goes, I'll have to go. But other than that, look, it hasn't it hasn't upset many trainings. I think in the last year, it's only I think it's only three or four trainings is actually upset, which is nothing in a year, you know. But you can always come back and train again later. So it's you know, it's actually a very well suited job, probably the best the best suited job I could probably have for. What made you uh, go into that profession? You know, I don't know. I, was, I actually always, I did, it sounds strange saying, but it's always something you kind of grew up saying, I'd like to be this, I'd like to be that. I always kind of said that. But obviously over the years competing at boxing as well, I thought it went away from me. But then when I seen they were looking for people and stuff, I kind of I kind of got that bit back again. So I was like, geez, I, you know, I'd love it. I'd love it. So I kind of, that was actually when I finished, when I finished over in Harringay as well, and I was basically done with the amateurs. It was kind of that time. I was like, you know, this is something I'd like to do for the rest of my life. This is before I knew I was going to sign anything, you know. So they just kind of fell together. That must be, it's a good profession to be in because I always ask boxers that if the boxing doesn't work out, you know, do you have a contingency plan afterwards? And it sounds like you've already, you've already got that in place as in, you know, if for, for whatever particular reason the boxing didn't work out, you still got a career in place. Yeah, well, look, I won't. I definitely won't be looking at it that way because I, I don't look at it as something to fall back on. George, you want to fall forward, so I just keep falling forward. But obviously, it's there in case something does happen because boxing, as you know, anything can happen. You could go to the doctor in the morning and he could say you have something here, you can't box again. So I just, like. 
it's definitely good to have there, you know, in case anything ever does happen with the boxing. Yeah. And it, it must it must keep you kind of fit as well because you do a lot of training for the fire fighting, don't you? Yeah, so we, yeah, we're after coming through our training now. Thank God. Um, that was, yeah, that was tough. We're nearly finished it. We have one or two more things to do. So yeah, you know what? My I've always been good and fit, so it wasn't too bad. But yeah, it was tough. And with the guys at work, do they do they try and support you at your fights? I, they haven't seen one of my fights yet. <laughs> no, haven't fought haven't fought since I started in the fire station over the COVID and everything. <laughs> well, hopefully, uh, hopefully this year be uh, it'll be uh, yeah. different. But yeah, um, definitely. Look, we we've got plans in the pipeline, so hopefully, and um, it'll be we're hoping this year. You know, we'll break up the small hall show scene and you know break into the bigger fights. Even though I love the small hall shows because there's a great fight there. But uh, look, as I said, I'm falling forward. That's where I'm heading, and I'm pushing on, and I want to I want to break onto the bigger fights. Yeah, absolutely. so so that was my next thing. Uh, you know. Wh- what do you what do you envisage this 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 year? I know it's a bit of a weird year, but you know, in, in if you could have a plan this year, how many how many fights would you like, and and what kind of level? Yeah, well, last year we said the start of the year, I sat down with my manager. I said, look, six fights, John, not less. I said, let's get six fights in, and that was our plan. We wanted to get to you know two or three four rounders, and then break into the six and the eight rounders. Obviously, that didn't happen at all, but um. This year, it, I think I'll push a bit quicker, not because of age or anything, because obviously I'm still young in the game, but I'd, uh, I think I might jump into six rounders straight away next, I think. So, look, if I got three fights this year, I'd be happy. Um, I hopefully four. I'd like to get three, maybe two six rounders and eight rounder, and maybe break into a good 50 50 fight in. So, you know, I'd love to challenge for that Irish title at the end of this year, to be honest. Yeah, I know the small hall scene, especially you know where we are. I spoke to Robert Smith the other day, and you know he he he's probably realistically small hall in 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 the UK is going to be probably September time. That being said, would you consider fighting uh, outside of Ireland, the UK, and, and potentially on one of those European shows? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Like I, I've been offered a few fights in Spain and stuff, but I must just wait for it this green list thing, I must wait for it to come out red because it's just at work uh, heading away. If I head away and come back, I'd have to isolate for two weeks. So I'm just waiting for it to uh, Spain to come out with the red, uh, red list and come into the green list. And once that happens, we're hoping it will happen in March. Once that happens, I can you know, travel away to fight. So hopefully come March, I can get over to Spain and get six rounder in. Yeah, and you, you sell quite a lot of tickets as well. So, it, you know, once a small hall returns you know you, you'd have no problem selling out your ticket uh, allocation potentially and they get those fights that you want yeah look I, I the, the ticket sales those are things never worry me because just look they have a good following and they just they love to keep coming so they've seen that in Dublin obviously it was the debut and I was wondering geez, will they come again but my next fight was in London and you know, there was a big gang in London and to get a gang over, you have to fly over to watch the fight in, you know, you have a good following. Like, so ticket side things, you know, doesn't bother me. Um, that side is covered. Uh, the big fight, yeah. I want to break into the big fight now towards the end of this year. I was talking to my manager. He is, he's, he's happy about it. He's happy for me to jump into a big fight. Um, but obviously, we need to knock off the ring rust of last year. For us. The, the Irish... Um... Yeah, the uh, Irish title is vacant. Yeah, I say, as far as I know, that title is vacant. I haven't seen anyone win it or defend it or anything like that. So I think it's vacant. Um, but I, what I'm saying is the fight to make for it, which is definitely me and Tyrone, or sorry, Tyrone, uh, Taylor McGoldrick, because he's clearly the best like, heavyweight out there for me in Ireland, you know, for me to fight right now. It is ready to compete for a title and obviously I'm pushing forward fast he's an MTK boxer I'd like to well it wouldn't be an upset to me because I know what I can do but obviously it'd be an upset to people watching and people expecting me to lose but I'd love to go in there and cause the upset for them and get a great you want to the bigger fight getting the upset against an MTK global fighter as well and, and realistically you, you think that could potentially happen this year 
Yeah, because you know, it has been a lot of build up behind it already, and it is it's catching pace. Like <laughs> there's been a few shots fired and stuff like that, and we both we both want this fight. And um, I know he mentioned in an interview the last day that I he thinks I'm judging him off his last fight, but I I've, I've mentioned it three times now. I've the last fight is the only fight I've not been watching. You know, I don't want to be preparing for someone by watching their worst performance. You got to prepare for someone by watching their best performance, which is what I'm doing. I'm watching his fights and I'm picking out the best bits of him in the fights, in the all them fights where he's boxing his best. And at boxing, I think I'd outbox him at. So that's why I want this fight. And obviously, he's he's going to be eligible to fight for the Irish title. I'd be thinking. So I think that's the fight to make. And um, because of the needle and what have you, do you think that is a fight that really should be? played in front of fought in front of fans yeah it uh, it should but look if it comes to it at the end of the year um, I want the title so if it comes down to it at the end of the year and there can't be fans I, I'm good to go so the ball will be in their court then yeah hopefully hopefully in a Busido it's always nice to kind of from a neutral perspective, to see like a fight with a little bit of needle and obviously there is there, there is with, with you guys you know, hopefully that fight can can be put on, but I suppose in the interim, it's it's first first and foremost you need you need to get back out. You know, you can get yeah. get a six rounder on your belt. Yeah, that's it. You know, because I haven't fought a six rounder yet. I fought two four rounders, and I don't know what it's like to be in a six rounder. I think it would suit me good because I seem to start slow, which I'm trying to get out of, and I actually I'm coming out of fairly good, but I seem to build on towards a fight and. Even in my first two fights, you could see the fourth round has always been the round where I do the damage. Like, you know, so at the third round, you can see I'm picking up the pace. In the fourth round, I do a lot of damage, and I haven't been gassed or you know tired after the putting in a heavy fourth round. So I think a, a bigger fifth and sixth round would suit me a lot better, and you know, build from that into an eight rounder. I think, you know, I think the longer the rounds, the better it would be for me. Do you think as well psychologically, because you know the the, the or the, the the fight's coming to an end, that you you know you start putting on the um, foot on the gas, or was it you know just that you think you you're one of those fighters that probably takes you three or four rounds just to kind of get into it? Yeah, I look, I'm one of them fighters because I like to feel out fight. I definitely like to feel out fight the first round or two, and um, I'm what I find is watching people in their first couple of fights, they're very. Uh, Chittery, you know, they like to jump into things and they like to try to get the big shots and everything. I think what I've shown so far is that I'm very relaxed in there for someone at my stage. You know, I like to feel out a fight, you know, try to walk my opponent down, you know, try to new box off the back foot. So I just think I'm very experienced for where I'm at. And I think it'll play a big part in the next couple of fights. Absolutely. Um, just just off the topic slightly, what how's how's it been where you are in regards to like the, obviously the pandemic situation? Are you, are you on a full lockdown and you know it, it, does it affect your training much? Yeah, we're in a full lockdown. Uh, we're elite and professional athletes are allowed to train, so I'm allowed to train. I have the boxing gym and my coach, so where you know training is training's going good strength and conditioning side of things is slightly affected all right because strength and conditioning coaches can't train right now. But we're getting look, we're getting some strength and conditioning in, in just private gyms, just myself really, to be honest. And my strength and conditioning coach, so Peter Donahue, he'll be back on training me now once once they ease down the levels a bit. But obviously we can't right now. So just the strength and conditioning side of things is slightly affected, but it's not completely affected because I'm still getting my weight in. So it's boxing side of things isn't really affected now. Are you guys allowed to spar out there as well? Yeah, we're we're allowed to spar for competitions. Yeah. Okay, that at least at least that you know kind of keeps you sharp-ish. I know it's not quite the same as as a fight but I mean this pandemic yeah. situation is well, say, you know saying, saying that too I haven't actually spared in a couple of weeks just, uh, just for more safety reasons because you know the numbers went the way up I have no fight coming up in the next six or seven weeks so I just said you know maybe we let, let the sparring go for a couple of weeks and 
we'll get back into it, John, nine or ten weeks out from a fight. So we're actually getting back into it now, hopefully this week or next week. But just, just for safety reasons, we just said the last couple of weeks we'd stay away from sparing because you, know, you just I, you wouldn't want anyone around you getting COVID or anything like that just because you wanted to spare. Yeah, it's it's weird times, isn't it? At the moment, I don't really know what to say. It's just it's just kind of um, you know, hopefully, you know, day by day, week by week, isn't it? Really, everyone's kind of planning it, and you know, you have to do what you can. And obviously, you've got your job yeah, to do. Yeah, and well. at the other side, there's, there's nothing we can do about it. So we just gotta you know, do the best we can with it. And there's no point in complaining yeah. about it because it's not going to change anything. So rather than complain and just you know, work as hard as you can, and that's all you can do. Hopefully, hopefully things work out for you this year. I'm sure it will. Yeah. You know, like you said, you know, you're, you're prepared to kind of take take yourself off abroad, which a lot of fighters have done. Hopefully, that kind of kickstart your your year really, and, and we'll look forward to kind of seeing seeing your progress. Yeah, look, just hopefully get to look get the ring wrapped up for now in the next two months, hopefully, and get the ball rolling. And look, we're full of confidence going into the going into the next couple of months. Going into the next year, we're full of confidence, even for the 50-50 fight, you know, I'm fully confident I'll, I'll win them fight. But um, look, all we got to do is get the first fight out of the way and we'll be on our way then. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and, and like I said, you know, I look forward to kind of following your career. And, you know, from my perspective, I'd just like to say thanks to Colin for arranging this, Colin Mid- Middlemass. Um, yeah. Is there any anyone that you would like to kind of thank or sponsors? And, and do you want to kind of sh- shout out your social media so people can follow you? Yeah, so on Instagram, it's just Kevin Crone and Boxing. And look, I put I put a lot of boxing stuff up. Sometimes maybe so as a fight, I avoid putting certain things up, but I'm always posting. Joe, you gotta just gotta keep active in the social media so people know you're not going into retirement or anything. Definitely, I'd like to. Can I just mention a few sponsors? Actually, absolutely, go for it. The, like the last year wouldn't be possible without and carry drain service well and dismantlers custom gym equipment PD Fitness Hercules Gym and SP Sport and obviously Colin at CN Sports as well and Boxing Ireland Promotions you know, they're all they're all behind me you know just keeping me going over the last year because it's been been a tough year no fight you know, they're just they're always there for you so a massive shout out to them uh, it wouldn't be done without them yeah that's 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 Good that and they've, Alma, they've stayed on board. Sorry, board. Alma's takeaway as well. Do you want to say that again? Alma's takeaway as well. I forgot one sponsor. <laughs> it's, it's, it, I was I just saying, it, it was, it's nice that they've stayed on board because, yes, you're not fighting, but the same point is professional boxers, especially at a smaller hall level, you know, don't don't earn from boxing at that stage. So all the sponsorship is, is obviously greatly appreciated from your side. So that's really nice that, you know, you, you've got yeah. your sponsors. And look, you know, we, we like to keep a, you know, a nice tight surrounding as well, because obviously you see some boxers you know, jump into signing and things and you know, they're just, they're pushed into these fights that are making money for the people around you and things like that. So we have a nice, you know, a nice niche people around us, people we trust and we know what moves we're making. So you know, that's the way we like it. Absolutely. Well, it's been really nice talking to you, and yeah, you know, I'd like to sense. kind of make sure that you know we keep in touch, and you know, once you've had your yeah, fight, we'll, we'll do a we'll do a, like a catch up interview, and and hopefully at some point we'll you know we we'll see see you live if the world kind of clears up anytime soon. Which who knows? Yeah, hundred percent. Hopefully next time we're talking, I'll have the Irish belt on my shoulder. Yeah, definitely. Well, listen, thanks very much for your time. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, cheers. Thanks for having me.